Karen Young, who was speaking to Countdown earlier today. Let's turn now to Rachel Maddow, the host of uh, her own show, of course, on Air America. Good evening again, Rachel. Hi, Keith. Nice to see you. Uh, all right. It's, yeah, it's been a long time. Um, before we indulge in the serial comic <laughs> experience of dissecting that actual moment even further, as you said during our coverage of the election, of the primary last night, uh, there's a, a double standard at play in the media's overwhelming reaction to this? I think there is. I mean, I should say at first that I don't see crying as a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. I pr anybody who knows me knows that I am a crier. I cry at the national anthem. I cry when I see buskers. I cry when I watch <laughs> television ads. I'm, I am a crier. And I don't see myself as weak. I don't see crying as a sign of weakness. And I also should say that it's, uh, I can see that it is newsworthy when a public figure, a politician or an office holder, shows emotion visibly in public. I mean, I remember when Defense Secretary Bob Gates choked up and actually audibly cried when he was giving a speech and he mentioned Marines who had died in Iraq. I did a big story about that on my radio show because I thought it offered uh, a lot of insight and actually really favorable insight into who he is as an office holder. But with all of that said, it's the double standard that's the problem. If it's a leading candidate for president showing emotion in public is newsworthy, if, if that's the standard, mm -hmm. then Mitt Romney not getting national coverage for crying three times in public in less than three weeks when he was as much of a national front-runner as Hillary Clinton was at the time, that makes absolutely no sense. There was, a, there was a Clinton standard here that was different than it was for other candidates, and it feels very gendered, and it feels indefensible. All right, so the, 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 uh, the, the idea that anybody, by the way, who, besides her who says they know what happened, uh, moment of exhaustion, premeditation, genuine emotion. Obviously, anybody is lying. See William Crystal, who, who said <laughs> yes. he knows. Oh, I'm mean, just telepath, apparently. But it revealed some part of her personality that she has rarely been uh, willing to let people see it. And for those who have met her, it's a real part. She can be relaxed. She can be funny. She can be as charming as her husband. Just tonight, she told Charlie Gibson that this race, that the support she and Obama both have, the stuff that that woman, Marion Young, was referring to, is a good problem for the Democrats to have, which very few Democrats would say. John Edwards wouldn't say that right now. I don't know if that Obama would either. This is outside the political box stuff. The reality of what we saw, could it be, is it being a human, being soft, being real that sells, or is it actually just not doing the politically expected thing that had this impact? I, I mean, I think that what's engaging and interesting in politics is when something unexpected happens, or when you can tell that something is happening that has not been scripted. And so it's exciting when things go off the rails a little bit in terms of what was predicted. And personally, politician, politicians get more engaging when it feels like they haven't planned out advance, in advance everything they're going to do. I mean, Mike Huckabee doesn't have a high likability factor because he, somebody writes great one-liners for him and he delivers them well. I mean, you know, a lot of politicians can do that. What's likable about Mike Huckabee is that he seems like he could do anything at any moment. He seems comfortable in his own skin. He seems unscripted. And that does actually make you connect with him in a more human way. Yeah. He'll make a joke about himself and make a joke about you and then make two jokes about himself. Yeah. Um, one thing though on this, we, uh, are we now going to be, as the media always overreacts to everything, are we now going to be analyzing the psychological movements of every remaining presidential candidate every moment of every day? I hope we do that less. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I here's how I feel about it. I mean, and you know about this putting a show together every day. I know about this putting a show together every day. You have to decide how much human engaging stuff to put out there to mix in with the real meat of policy and people's records and stuff. And I think that as long, if you sprinkle the kind of amateur psychoanalysis across the more substantive stuff about policies, records, conflicts between the candidates, that's fine. But if you come down to just relying on psychoanalysis, ultimately it's like making a whole meal out of just Mrs. Dash. You know, it's, it's supposed to be seasoning. It's not supposed to be the substance of what we do every day. A little bit goes a long way.